the esteemed gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Federal agencies carry out critical missions of all kinds. In Florida alone, civil servants have roles like nuclear inspectors, emergency management professor, uh, professionals, and certain rocket scientists that are vital and probably cannot be done remotely. However, there are many vital roles that can be done remotely. Um, it's no secret that hurricane season hits Florida harder than most each year. By the projections from most scientists, Florida is facing rising sea levels and increasingly violent hurricanes. This summer, ocean temperatures off the coast reached record levels, climbing to over 100 degrees, hot tub levels. In Florida, we know all too well that crisis can happen at any moment, from a global pandemic to extreme weather events, which are becoming all too common. The federal government has to remain operational during these times. And the beautiful thing about that, including telework as part of the solution, is what the data shows. It's actually better for productivity. That's right, telework is actually better for productivity, which is borne out of the fact that more than 70% of federal employees reported that telework had improved productivity at their agency a great deal. Number two, it's actually better economically. The General Services Administration, the federal agency that provides real estate, discovered that in a single year, the federal government saved more than $1 billion in costs from the reduced office space. So I think there could be some bipartisanship around that because I hear a lot from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle about saving money. They want to talk about SNAPs and food stamps. I think office space makes a lot of sense too. The Office of Personal Management, the federal agency that manages the federal workforce, also found that agencies experience significant savings related to transit commuting costs as well as reduced employee absences because of increased telework. And it's actually better for recruitment and retention. Take NASA, for instance, which I, uh, during my district work period, I got to visit the mobile launcher for Artemis II. Really excited about that. Hopefully the government doesn't shut down because I hear that can push back our launch date quite a bit. In the agency's written response to the committee, NASA indicated that having a geographically dispersed telework-ready force has helped them maintain the continuity of operations in case of an emergency, including regional weather events. Mr. Gibbs, the Mission Support Directorate includes the Office of Human Capital Management, correct? It does. And what's the mission of this office? So human capital, if you ask what does human capital do, their first mission, take care of the people of NASA. That is their, that is their ultimate responsibility uh, for the agency. And it's to ensure that NASA, NASA's top talent, right? Absolutely, 100% to make sure we have the right minds to compete and to make sure we can complete a very technologically challenging mission and one that's rather unforgiving. What other organizations or companies does NASA have to compete with for top talent? Pretty much everyone, fundamentally. Um, we're recognized as a leader in the aerospace, engineering, science, exploration world. We see everyone from venture capitalists to other engineering organizations to you name it, uh, looking at our talent as an opportunity to bring in a new way of thinking to their business process. Virgin uh, Galactica, SpaceX, 100%. right? For five straight years, NASA has been selected as the best place to work uh, in the direction, federal. It's 11, just oh, so we're clear. Oh, 11. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. 11 straight years, yeah. NASA has been selected as the best place to work in the federal government. So I think you know a thing or two about what it takes to attract top talent. Do these other employers have telework policies, like SpaceX, for instance? It's all over the board, honestly. If we looked at the top 100 companies across the United States, and honestly, their telework and workplace flexibilities are all over the board all over the board. SpaceX and Virgin Galactica, for instance, are hiring roles that permit telework every single week. So the private sector has caught on to this. And I can tell you, we know that the private, what pushes the private sector is productivity and the bottom line, right? Correct. And so they've noticed this and they've taken advantage of it. I don't want us to fall behind. I don't want NASA to fall behind. I don't want the federal government to fall behind in looking at the future of how work is gonna look like so we can both save money recruit the best talent and have the retention that we need to complete the difficult missions ahead of us. Many talented minds have committed themselves to working in public service. I also want to say I find it pretty offensive that one of my colleagues would insinuate that federal employees, just because they're taking advantage and using telework policies, are somehow not working. We're talking about working class Americans who have dedicated their life to public service. In fact, our all of our constituent service teams can't do jack 
without the federal employees on the other side of the phone line um, that we're helping to, uh, our constituents get connected to. And so I want to thank all of our federal employees for all their work. Telework is one tool in the toolbox to man maintain continuity and attract cutting-edge talent. Thank you, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back his time.